All right, we're live. Thanks, Carr, for that warm introduction. Um, but yeah, I just want to say a huge thank you to Blah Blah. This is this is awesome. Uh, you know, these you know we get together on a Saturday morning, uh, Saturday afternoon. So I mean, this is really something special that's happening here. Builders uh, doing something really big. So uh, uh, you know, it's Bitcoin. Uh, but yeah, just huge thank you to Blah Blah to Carr for inviting me. It was an easy yes. Um, but yeah, we're in the good old days. Um, I want to start off with a, uh, a, a meme or a, uh, a post that Carman posted. Uh, you know, we are in the good old days. Enjoy it while it lasts. Uh, it's only being monetized once, that being Bitcoin. So uh, just really appreciate this, this time. Uh, really take advantage of it because, you know, it's not always going to be like this. Uh, five, ten years from now, don't look back and wish you did something different or more um, because this is, this is the time. So uh, if that doesn't fire you up, then I don't know what will. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, just kind of an intro on myself. Uh, two, I want to make a uh, short, uh, I, I only have 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, but uh, I, try, I try to condense this down as much as I could. Um, I'm just gonna read from a script that I wrote uh, and that'll help me hopefully get through everything because uh, there's a lot that I wanted, that really came to mind I thought y'all would find valuable uh, from a non-technical perspective. Uh, I know there's a lot of really smart technical people here that work out of here that, uh, that, that built on Bitcoin. <laughs> Um, but I think the, the biggest value that I can bring is from a non-technical perspective. And so, you know, uh, just listen and, and uh, you know, it's being recorded. So uh, you can rewatch and, uh, and use later on. So, uh, but yeah, who am I? Um, you know, I thought about this for a few weeks. What am I going to talk about? Uh, you know, how, you know, what value could I provide you um, uh, today? So, you know, top builder, uh, everyone here, here, uh, you know, maybe on the path to starting their first startup, or maybe their second, third, fourth, or fifth. Um, I'm sure there's there's uh, many different, uh, you know, from one founder to I think all the way up to ten founders. So there's a big, uh, diverse group. So, and two, I've been under the weather the past few days, so uh, I'm a little uh, wonky. Had uh, to drink some cough syrup this morning, so uh, I apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, the first thing I wanted to say is I just consider myself a a, a perpetual student. Um, and I don't want to be considered an expert on any of these topics. These are just things that I've learned, I've observed, uh, learned from others, um, and I've been, you know, just been lucky enough to work with a lot of really smart people uh, to learn from over the over the last, uh, I'd say, decade. Um, and they're, you know, from their successes, their failures, their milestones, you know, scaling in companies, uh, all of which, uh, uh, you know, we're providing the market uh, something completely new, which is what I think everyone here is doing, uh, especially if you're building on Bitcoin. Um, you know, so what would I tell myself uh, is, is kind of how I wanted to approach this. Um, what would I want to know if I were in your shoes, uh, uh, you know, being non-technical? Um, uh, you know, what were the non-technical things that I would want to know uh, and, and hear? And maybe things that I don't hear. Um, so that's what I want to do today. Um, yeah, disclaimer. Um, uh, I'm not representing Kraken today, so uh, uh, all these opinions are my own. Um, I, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, uh, yeah, content and opinions are all my own. Um, some background on me, spent the, uh, spent the majority of my career in small to medium sized uh, high growth startups, uh, last three years at Kraken. So I lead a multinational team of, of specialists who, who really serve as a gatekeeper to our platform. Uh, in 2020, I started a Bitcoin advisory, uh, with, to, to, to help people store, acquire, um, and learn about Bitcoin. Ultimately, uh, that actually led to Kraken, and then so I shelved that uh, of, over the last three years. Uh, prior to that, I was a company called Roofstock um, as a senior investment analyst. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, that was on the institutional side. So what we do is value hundreds of thousands of properties, um, do the valuations on those, and then basically pitch those those deals to to uh, large uh, corporations like. Uh, 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 Blackstone or BlackRock or Apollo, uh, large funds. Um, and then prior to that, I worked at a company called Open Door, where I launched new markets uh, as we expanded across the US. So everything from scaling, building teams, um, training operations, portfolio management uh, in market. Um, and then prior to that, sales um, and, uh, and a few very uh, small startups, uh, less than 10 people. So, so yeah. Um, I should start off with the exercise. Um, you know, just get some participation from the audience. Uh, I have two shapes right here, one on the left and one on the right. Uh, and one of these shapes is larger than the other. And so I want you to let me know, uh, a show of hands, 
if you think the one on the left is larger. One, two, three, four, five. Do you think it, you think it is? Yeah, I think it is. Jim. Okay. Oh, what about the right? One, two. No one else? Okay, so we got one, two, so we got five. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, they're actually both the same size. So. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> well, that wasn't an option. They're, they're, they're both the same size. Okay, that's, that's uh, 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 you know, and, and, and it, was, it was really simple. I saw this uh, a little while back. Um, uh, and, you know, that's really a lot of what a startup is that I've seen is, is like your ideas, uh, you know, you, your ideas, uh, your startup, it, it, they're going to get pulled in different directions. You're going to get told what to think, how to think, uh, uh, you know, receive good advice that turns out bad, uh, seemingly bad advice that turns out really good, advice you wish you've listened to sooner, and advice that you never wish you've heard. Um, and that's that's just how it is. It's really hard to distinguish between each of those in real time. Uh, so just recognize that and embrace that. And and similar to uh, the figure on the right, uh, which is a, a Lichtenberg uh, a figure, that's kind of how I view a startup is, you know, you have an idea at the bottom and then you have infinite possibilities that branch out, you know, zigzag left and the right and then success is not a straight line. Um, and, you know, couple that all in with everything else the world's going to tell you and all the advice you're going to get. Uh, that's that's kind of the the uh, uh, the journey. Um, but yeah, just embrace that, recognize that, and that will will, will help you. Um, and so that brings me to our first point is startups are counterintuitive. Um, and this is something I learned back from uh, Paul Graham in 2012. Um, uh, uh, and and it's something that stuck with me and, and I've continuously seen uh, uh, playing out over and over again. Um, you know, whether that being people making the wrong decisions or people making decisions that actually turned out right that no one uh, uh, thought would. Um, and so, and there's really, really many parallels with Bitcoin. So I want everyone to think about two points in time, you know, uh, the time that they first learned about Bitcoin to the time that they actually understood what it was, right? Like, why did it take so long? I, I think for most people, it probably took, for me, it took four years. Uh, I think for most people, it probably took a few years, at least. Uh, and that's because Bitcoin is super counterintuitive, similar to a startup. Um, and so, you know, think about, what that process was for you from the first time you heard about Bitcoin to when the light bulb went off. And, uh, uh, you know, what did it take you to understand what Bitcoin is? Um, you know, a lot of things about Bitcoin is counterintuitive. Uh, even though that makes sense to us, you know, unknown founder, that's super counterintuitive, right? To us, we know it's a feature, and, you know, not a bug. Uh, digital property, right? That's really counterintuitive. How can something be digital and be better than like the actual thing you can hold in your hand? Well, I mean, we knew, we know why, but in the beginning we probably didn't uh, fix supply. You know, we have uh, the world telling us, uh, you know, governments, schools, university saying that uh, you know fixed supply is it bad? Uh, you want an inflationary monetary uh, 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 you know currency um, to operate on, and that's good. That's what we're told, but that's that's not. Uh, deflationary, same thing, low time preference. We have culture telling us that that's prioritized today over the future, you know, YOLO, uh, whenever in fact it's the opposite. Um, you know, Bitcoin is for your enemies. That's super counterintuitive. I mean, it has to be for it to work because um, somebody considers me their enemy somewhere in the world. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, so uh, uh, what does all this mean? Um, I would say at the heart, uh, just do things you enjoy uh, whenever you are either thinking about or starting a startup, really things you genuinely are interested in and enjoy. And naturally the best ideas for those startups will arise uh, in the form of problems. Uh, you know, be your own best customer. That's like really the best thing you can do. Uh, and that will help you see things that others can't because at the end of the day, startups are counterintuitive. Um, so some counterintuitive points, I mean, stop trying to be perfect. If you're starting a startup, like just get a product out there. Just get something out there. You know, it doesn't even have to be a good product. Just, 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 just share it with the market. Share it with users or potential users. Um, yeah, just stop trying to be perfect. Uh, pricing, uh, 
you know, you hear a lot of people trying to be competitive with, uh, with other companies and other products, uh, when a lot of times that's, that's probably not the best thing uh, or, or, or way to approach it. You generally want to avoid matching or undercutting competitors' prices, uh, especially in services like Plug Lab, for example. I mean, you could look at WeWork, uh, Capital Factory, you have many other examples, but yeah, you know, they both have coffee and snacks, but this is a completely different product and the value that you get out of it is completely different. And so if you compare those two and price it the same, uh, it, it, it doesn't really make sense. I mean, I'm not saying you can charge more than those, but you're getting a completely different uh, value out of it. So uh, uh, maybe you don't compare, uh, uh, it, you know, it's probably not the best idea to, to compare based off of what other people are charging. Um, advice and assistance, always ask, uh, uh, you know, people want to, from what I've seen, people want to look and, and feel smart, uh, but asking for assistance is a strength and not a weakness. You know, it's fine not to have all the answers. Uh, you'll find people that go out of their way to help you just because you do ask, so always ask. Uh, gaming the system, uh, you know, I think we've been conditioned uh, since, since birth to uh, you know, always look for the shortcut. Always uh, uh, you know, go you know, go work for government if 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 you want to do that. I think that still works, um, but uh, this really stops being effective in in, in startups, particularly in Bitcoin. Uh, so stop searching for the shortcuts. Uh, you know, feel good friends, right? If people that you seek business advice from or that you surround yourself with are only giving you good advice, I mean, they're not helping you. Uh, if they don't surprise you, or if they don't ruffle your feathers. Then they're not making you better. They're not. not they're not really helping you. Um, so get business advice elsewhere. Uh, and uh, and yeah, uh, delayed uh, delayed gratification. That's another one. Um, opportunity cost. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, startups are kind of intuitive. Uh, so if, so if you take away anything uh, from today, uh, anytime you're faced with a business decision, I would say stop for a second. Remember that moment uh, today. Of, of just startups are counterintuitive and ask yourself uh, these three questions. Uh, these are these are questions I ask myself pretty regularly is, is, you know, is this decision that you're about to make creating more value for your users? Is it eliminating waste? Is it increasing efficiency? Is it increasing revenue? Uh, and with extreme emphasis on creating value for users, that's, that's the number one, always should be the number one. Um, and if it's not, then I would say you should rethink uh, what's, what you're about to do. Uh, even if it feels right. Um, and so the second point, uh, after startups are kind of intuitive, uh, starting in with a client, uh, you know, it seems really obvious, uh, but create things users love. You know, everything you do is about creating value for your users at the end of the day. Uh, it's very broad, but the most successful teams make their work about one thing, and that is creating value for their users. Uh, and better, like I said earlier, if it starts with, a, with, with, with something, a problem the founder is, is solving for themselves. Um, and every decision you make, ask yourself, you know, does this create more value for my users? Uh, if not, just reconsider, because uh, you're probably going to make a, a big mistake. Um, and so, yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to share a short story um, that has, I think, a one of the best examples of how to create value for your users. Um, and this is about an engineer a successful engineer. Uh, this engineer recognized a the problem. They were having decided to create a solution. This engineer boiled the system down to its essentials uh, and created the components and solved for why, um, and then simply shared the design with the market uh, and collected feedback and iterated and got better. Uh, can anyone name that engineer? Oh, he he uh, simply, he recognized the problem that he was having himself, uh, decided to create a solution, and boiled the system down to its essentials. Uh, Satoshi. Satoshi, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was all he did. Uh, so if we have one lesson to learn is, uh, I think we have history's best example of how to start and end with the client. Uh, and create something users love, because <clears throat> that's really what we're all here really doing. Uh, that's, that's our number one goal. And so Bitcoin, there's no CEO, there's no founding team, there's no marketing team, there's no finance team, uh, there's no VC funding, there's no strategy 
team, there's no board, <clears throat> no design team, you know, there's no series A, B, C, you know, Z rounds, uh, you know, yet Bitcoin has become the 10th largest monetary asset in the last 15 years. And, you know, the very reason why we're all here today. So how can Bitcoin, something go from uh, zero to nearly $1 trillion in value in 15 years? For example, Berkshire Hathaway is number 10, uh, sorry, number 11 on this list. Founded in 1839, uh, 185 years ago. Almost has 400,000 employees. And Bitcoin had surpassed that by doing just one thing uh, extremely well. And that was starting ending with the client and creating something users love. And uh, yeah, so from there, get users early. That's your number one goal, right? I, I see time and time again, people wait. Uh, people want to wait till launch. People want to wait till everything's perfect and all, you know, all their ducks are in a row, but you know, you can get users. Uh, you don't have to wait. I just boil the system down to what the, uh, where the problem lives and what is needed and, uh, and then solve solve for that and then iterate, get feedback, iterate. And uh, but yeah, um, you know, one, one short story. I, I uh, was hoping Nick would be here, uh, but we, uh, we had a little project uh, in 2022 and 2023 where, uh, you know, we had, 15 weeks booked out in 2023, uh, at the end of 2022. Uh, and that was before we had any website built, before we had any app launched, before any capital was raised. Uh, you know, that's, that's a side project uh, and, you know, on hold now, but, you know, just get users is, is, is my point. Uh, use your network, go to where your users are, events, meetups, conferences, uh, or maybe different meetups or conferences that aren't, uh, you know, within the Bitcoin bubble. Uh, you know, outreach, get creative, uh, outreach online. Uh, then talk to your users as much and often as you possibly can. That's, that's one of the most important things uh, uh, and, and, and that, I, that I've learned is, is talking to your users often, uh, you know, is, is super, uh, uh, for me, it's, it's, it was super uh, scary, uh, one of the scariest things, but you have everything to learn from them. Uh, one story at Open Door. Uh, I was launching a new market. We had super low growth at launch relative to other markets, and we were getting concerned. We, were, we, were, we you know we thought we were going to lose our jobs, uh, and so we started scrambling. You know what are we going to do? Uh, and we started calling clients uh, that actually went on to our platform. They entered in their phone number, uh, and so an, an email to get a free offer from us, and but nothing was converting at the time. So we called them and asked them, okay, what's going on? Like, we just wanted to find out because we had, I mean, that was where we were gonna find the answer. Uh, after talking to them for a little while, found out the realtors prior to us launching in the market, they got together and said, hey, this big corporation is coming in. Uh, you know, they're gonna cut out the little guy. Uh, they had this, uh, and so they came up with a plan to, to make it really difficult for us to succeed in that market. Uh, so we wouldn't learn that if we didn't talk to our clients. Uh, okay, so we, we, we found that out. Okay, what do we do next? Uh, we'll, we'll, we just educate the client. Uh, the things that they were being told by their agents was not really true. Um, there's more of a disinformation, disinformation campaign. Um, and so we had to educate the client. Uh, then we reached out to realtors. We got them on board. We showed them, hey, like, this is what we do. This is who we are, and got them on board. And we then got the most and biggest producing realtors in that market to then work for us, so mutual benefit. Um, and so that's how we solved the problem, and we wouldn't have if we didn't talk to our clients first. Um, does anyone know who this is? Who's Elizabeth Holmes? Um, yeah, so so I bring this up. Uh, this is Elizabeth Holmes. Um, if you didn't know, um, and she was Times 100 most influential people in 2015. And uh, if you read some of these quotes about her, 
you know, how playing the long game made Elizabeth Holmes a billionaire. None of this would have worked if Theranos hadn't figured out how to make testing transparent and inexpensive. Uh, the implications are mind blowing. Uh, with expensive and easy access to information running through their veins, people will have unpre unprecedented window uh, on their own health. The company plans to charge less than 50% of the standard Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement rates. Unlike the rest of the testing industry, Theranos lists its prices on its website. Blood typing, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so why did I bring this up? Uh, what was one thing she did really well? Mm. Other than, uh, uh, other than the fraud, I would say there is at least one thing that we could learn um, minus, you know, ignoring all the bad things. And um, yeah, I would say she created a story that everyone wanted to believe. And so that's my next point is like storytelling is extremely important uh, with everything you do. Um, you know, she created a story everyone wanted to believe. You know, she was a Stanford dropout at 19. She was a good leader, charismatic and persuasive, compelling vision, partnerships, uh, networking relationships, uh, per, uh, persuasive pitches. She managed to raise a, a, a crap load of capital and reach a valuation of, uh, of nine billion at its peak. And that was, I think, one of the biggest reasons for that was because she was a great storyteller. Um, or at least one of the positive things to take away from it. And so, uh, so yeah, so storytelling. Uh, that is really the glue that holds everything together uh, with you and your startup, or at least in my opinion, that's, that's a very important aspect of it. Uh, the lesson is, I mean, obviously don't commit fraud. Don't be like her in all the bad ways, but aside from that, uh, yeah, a powerful story and a powerful narrative can create tremendous value for your company or for your startup. Um, you know, someone might say, oh, you know, is that fake value? Uh, I, I would say no um, in certain ways, and which I'll expand on here in a, a few minutes. But, uh, but yeah, I would say this is one of the most important things that I've seen and one of the uh, indicators that I've seen uh, in every successful founder. The best teams, best executors, uh, the best leadership and overall the best indicator of success is the ability to create really magic in their story and tell it well. Uh, you know, this is a big problem too, I think, in our industry and, and with, with a lot of uh, startups is, uh, and this is something I think we have to get better at. You know, I, I hear pitches and people talk about what they're doing all the time and, you know, a lot of times at the end of it, I still don't know what they do. Um, even though I've, you know, been in the space for several years and I would say I'm uh, more technical than the average person uh, with, with Bitcoin. So yeah, it's something I think we've get, we have to get a lot better at. And if you do, it's, it's, it could add tremendous value, um, which I'll explain how uh, here in a few minutes. But, uh, oops. Um, but yeah, so what is storytelling? Yeah, it's glue that holds everything together. Uh, it gives meaning and adds soul to everything you're doing. Uh, that everything you and the team are doing. Um, I mean, it's a story we tell ourselves. So uh, it's what keeps us going when things get tough. I mean, they never will. I guess ask Carr uh, is starting a startup hard. Yeah, I mean, it's super hard. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's easy for very few. Uh, so it's likely it's, that it's going to be hard. Um, this, the story, but it's a story that we tell ourselves because um, when things get tough, you know, it keeps us focused and motivated. I think that creates value for your, for you and your startup. Uh, it's a story we tell others. Uh, storytelling will inspire and motivate. It'll impact how well you lead, align, and get buy-in from your team. Um, really impacts how well the team drives things to completion, um, and how well you differentiate yourself from from others. So from your competitors, uh, that creates tremendous value uh, for, for you and your startup. Uh, it's also what we must believe ourselves. Uh, you know, you really have to believe your story. Uh, you know, it builds an emotional connection with your startup um, and it can impact how well you execute. That adds tremendous value to your startup. And it's what others must believe. Uh, so it will determine how well the founding team works together. 
it will determine how well you know you recruit talent. I mean, recruiting top talent is super hard. Uh, and the better your story is, the better you're at telling your story, the easier that will be for you. Uh, it will determine how uh, uh, who uses your product and why. Uh, it will determine how well the team executes uh, together. Uh, it will capture attention from from the market, um, you know, from from leaders in the market, um, from from your from your uh, uh, clients and consumers, and it will impact how uh, how you raise capital, right? Uh, and that all those things I think creates tremendous value for your startup. So I think it's one of the most undervalued things that we can and have to get good at. Uh, and it, it can really be a superpower if you do it well. Another another thing is is uh, have you heard of ha have have you watched Michael Saylor? I mean, can I see a show of hands of how many times uh, uh, more than once have you watched him? Probably everyone or mostly everyone more than ten times. Yeah, definitely. I've probably more than 20 for, for a lot of us. Um, I think one thing is why that is, is, is because he's a great storyteller. Um, uh, yeah, it helps that he's bought a crap load of Bitcoin, but he's fun to watch and we keep watching him over and over because he's a really great storyteller. Um, except I, I think uh, engineers don't like him as much uh, 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 for some reason, as, is what I've noticed. Um, but yeah, storytelling, super important. Uh, but to the next point, uh, yeah, co-founders. Uh, another super important part is, uh, um, is co-founders. Uh, what's one common thing that you see in all these photos? Sorry, smiling? What'd you say? Friendly? Uh, yeah, uh, that's yeah. Both of those are true. I'm I'm looking for something slightly different. More than one. Yes, that's exactly what I was what I was going for. Um, yeah, there's more than one founder. I mean, you know, I guess there has to be a co or more than one if there's a co in the founder. But um, yeah, the largest, most successful companies almost always have more than one founder. And you know why is that? Um, yeah, I think because co-founders uh, offer a net. Uh, net positive, um, and but but why is that? Ultimately, founding a company is hard. We all know that, uh, uh, and uh, you know if you are successful, uh, it'll probably be one of the hardest things you do. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of benefits to co-founders. Um, but yeah, why multiple founders? Um, you know, brings productivity to the team, uh, adds tremendous value. It challenges make make you better, or it should. The, you know, co-founders should do all these things. Um, if not more, uh, they should hold you accountable. They should bring balance to your team. They should have complementary skills, uh, emotional support. I mean, hard and lonely. I mean, trying doing this on your own is is a really challenging thing. I'm not saying you know if you're only a single co-founder. Uh, I'm not saying to go find co-founders, but it is always something to think about at least, um, um, and also bring the value that it brings also leadership skills. Um, but when looking for co-founders, they should be as good or better than you. Um, you know, maybe not in the same skills, but they should bring uh, a, a, a something else to the table, if not the same, um, be a complementary skills with what y'all are doing. Um, but yeah, setting expectations, co-founding is a marriage. Uh, choose to work with people you like and respect. Uh, your relationship should make the both of you better. And the, prob the probability of success will be based on how well uh, you two do work together. Um, and so, yeah, I would approach choosing co-founders uh, and early employees as you would choosing a friend, a wife, uh, or a husband. And uh, you should generally like and respect those those people. Um, and, and I would advise, you know, not being, um, uh, not, not selecting your co-founders based on them being smart. Because uh, that's, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, uh, marry somebody just because they're smart or you shouldn't because it, you probably won't be married that long. Um, the same thing for co-founders. Um, yeah, that's a good, nice to have, but there's, I think, a lot more other important things, more important things than just being smart. Um, the co-founder dynamic, dynamic forms the bedrock of the Startups Foundation. So co-founders aligned 
on everything at all times. And a bad marriage between co-founders is easy to spot and very hard to hide. So if you uh, do have conflicts with your co-founders and y'all don't work well together, I mean, it's only a matter of time until somebody sees it and or the wrong person sees it and notices it, whether it's you know a potential investor or a VC. Um, you know, if you if you get to that point, um, they're 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 going to really uh, easily spot that um, in in many ways, right? I've 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 heard, I've heard of uh, uh, VCs, you know, this, they would east they would ask their uh, uh, they would speak with one of the co-founders, ask them a question, hey, what's your uh, I mean, this is yeah, this has uh, happened uh, several times. They'd ask their co-founder. Um, what's your uh, next, you know, three to six month? You know, what's the top three most important things you're you're looking to accomplish? And then they'd go to the other co-founder and ask them the same question, and then and they could tell really quickly how well they're aligned, and and if their answers were different, then they, I mean, they would not be good. It's it's not a good sign. So even even things as simple as that, uh, just being aligned. Um, uh, can really uh, impact your ability to 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 raise um, and to you know get to that point. Um, but yeah, things to consider: single founders. Uh, there's, I, I think, about 53.85 percent or 53 percent of the projects participating in Top Builder are single founders. Um, and yeah, you know that's you know these are really early uh, uh, ideas and, and projects um, uh, for the most part. So. Um, you know, there's not necessarily anything bad with that, um, but there are a few things that I would consider. Uh, one of those being high conviction. You know, ask yourself, do you have unwavering conviction in your idea? That's going to need to be even more so if you're a single co-founder. Uh, not saying it shouldn't be if you have multiple co-founders, but it's 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 going to be uh, more highly scrutinized um, down the road um, if you know if if and when you get bigger um, or get some some traction. Um, um, especially from from investors, um, they're going to look at that. Um, you know, how convicted are you? Uh, also, technical competence. You know, are you able to build? Can you make substantial progress on the idea without a co-founder? And also, what did you build uh, without a co-founder? You know, and in what time? Uh, anticipate unique challenges down the road. Also, as a solo founder, um, and also maintain and build your network of potential co-founders um, along the way because. Uh, that's just great practice, especially, you know, I think that's a huge value add at Blub Lab. You know, you're going to meet, talk to people uh, in the industry uh, that already think, uh, uh, you know, they have similar philosophy, they have similar, uh, uh, you know, valuable skills that you might need. So, um, yeah, just surround yourself with those people. Um, it Because if and when you do decide, um, uh, you know, sooner or later, you're probably going to need a co-founder. Um, yeah, just so just build that network up now. And uh, so my next point, value, uh, super important for, uh, I mean, I say anyone, but especially in uh, starting a startup, you know, understanding value, how value is created, and even some valuations. Um, you know, and I'm not saying to go and learn how to, you know, do uh, 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 DCF uh, uh, models um, or anything, but um, you know that that. Can you know that could help? Um, but uh, I'm not going to dig too deep in this one today because it's 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 uh, a super uh, can get you know super down the rabbit hole. But I just wanted to bring it up because I think it's very important. Uh, some important questions to ask yourself. You know, what is value? Uh, how do you value the world around you? Uh, what value does your product or service create? Uh, how do you, your users value your product or your prospective users? How do they value your product? Uh, how do you you value your actions? Uh, you know, you mean you're going to have an infinite list of things to do as a founder. I mean, you're never done. You know, so how can you prioritize those to understand and to and to get things done that are actually the most valuable? Um, so how do you value those things? Um, you know, and 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 then also how do you, you know how do you collect that feedback to know that you're valuing the right things properly? Um, and so um, yeah, how does your team value their actions? You know, how do they prioritize those actions? How do they prioritize what's what's uh, what, you know what's the most valuable thing for them to uh, to work on? Um, you know, an, an example is is uh, growth can be good, bad, or neutral, right? People maybe sometimes look at growth as oh, that's a good thing, right? But yeah, at, at what cost? You know, you're paying for that growth no matter uh, 
which one it ends up being, whether it's good, bad, or neutral. Uh, or sorry, uh, yeah, whether it's good, bad, or neutral, you're, you're, you're paying for it in some way. So, uh, so how do you know whether value is actually being created versus destroyed with that growth? Um, and so, yeah, so I would just ask yourself, you know, what drives the value of your company or your idea or your product and, uh, and what value you create for the future uh, growth of your, of your company? Um, and, I, and, I, and I have a compass here because um, I, I kind of imagine value and how I look at value and understanding value is, is really a compass to, to help steer you in, in the right direction. Uh, this is probably one of the most, uh, I would say, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, coveted uh, topic um, in, in startup lands um, or the most talked about topics. I, I mean, I would just say stop talking about it. Uh, I, 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 you know, I mean, if, if like if you're doing all the right things, like you don't need to talk about raising capital because money's gonna flow your way, right? So focus on doing the right things, uh, not necessarily on raising capital. Um, you know, maybe, you know, in two, this isn't a one size fits all. Um, maybe there are uh, times in the right time for you to think about raising, but generally, uh, I would say bootstrap as long as you can. Uh, raising does not equal success. Um, it's not a milestone. You know, it's, it, I, I kind of, uh, I think a lot of uh, uh, people picture it as like a checkbox, as an accomplishment um, that you check off while starting a startup. You know, you know not raising is, is always a, a good answer um, or maybe delaying raising um, and uh, and also probably one of the easiest things you do uh, in your startup. So take that into perspective. Uh, I mean, finding product market fit, uh, building products users love, that's gonna be harder. Finding the right team, hiring the top talent and keeping the top talent and, and the top engineers and keeping the top engineers is gonna be harder. Uh, selling your products is gonna be harder. Uh, you know, navigating compliance and regulations, that's, that's gonna be harder. Uh, you know, adapting and just navigating to uncertainty, that's, that's most likely all those things are gonna be harder and then add all those together. Um, it's, it's just not a comparison. So, uh, you know, it's probably gonna be one of the easiest things you do. So uh, it just raising capital uh, really assures that you, you're gonna uh, approach those things probably sooner um, or more certainly approach and those other uh, things to try and um, to try and overcome those challenges, um, and you'll be under more pressure to do so. So, uh, yeah, there's many different reasons uh, VCs invest, and many different reasons each VC invests. So, this, like I said, it's not a one size fits all uh, game. Uh, you know, it varies. Um, so, I'm just talking generally. But if and when you get to the point where it makes sense to talk about raising, uh, here are a few things that I think you. Uh, you'd find helpful and one is the right VC. So ask for money from the right uh, people uh, and those are investors with domain expertise in what you do. Uh, you know, don't just raise just for the sake of getting money um, because if you raise from the right VC, that is gonna give you more value than the actual money that you're receiving uh, in the long term. So if you do that right, that is, you're gonna get more value out of those things that, that those VCs bring, uh, you know, investors with large networks of people in your industry, investors you like and respect, enjoy working with, the same goal, shared vision, uh, and the relationship is also a marriage. Uh, so approach it, uh, I would say approach it uh, as a relationship for life. Uh, what VCs look for, uh, you know, this is, is Probably pretty obvious, but um, you know, always always good to think about traction. Uh, you know, product users love the founding team. Uh, what you know, why why would they invest in you? Uh, I mean, they're going to invest in people first uh, because that's that's the really I would say the most constant thing uh, at a startup. Um, you know, if you know, if anyone has worked at a startup before. They change, they pivot, they adapt over time, pretty constantly, nonstop. 
and so uh, it's, it's more about the founding team than the idea itself in, in many cases. So they're going to invest in the team uh, and they're going to look for a, a, a team that has a track record um, of, of doing things, of, you know, what have you done? Um, and what is your motivation and inspiration for your product? Um, the best answer um, is if you know, you're solving a problem that you have for yourself. And if it starts with that, that, that is, I would say, always the best answer. You know, because you know, again, like I said earlier, you want to be your own best customer um, because that is how you really navigate do the counterintuitive, all the counterintuitive things that you're going to face. Um, and if you're on your own best customer, you, you know, you know what the customer wants more than anyone else. Um, and so the best answer, uh, you know, for what is your motivation, inspiration for the product, the most answer is, is it's a problem you're solving for yourself. Um, leaders, uh, do you know, do you, do you have leadership uh, uh, qualities or, or experience or, or things to show for that you've done in the past that, that show you're a good leader? Uh, being decisive and ability to make decisions, uh, communication and your ability to, to clearly communicate, uh, you know, going back to storytelling, uh, that's, that's going to be a big piece of it um, with, with what they look at. Uh, you know, communication, how we, you, you, you communicate your, your, your product, your service, how easily you communicate, uh, make it very simple um, and, and tell a story. Um, and also your strengths. I mean, they're going to invest in your strengths. Um, you know, what, 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 what makes you, you, you unique, um, versus everyone else, um, and what makes, uh, you know, you the strongest candidate, uh, to receive their money, um, versus, you know, thousands of others, uh, that are out there, um, you know, trying to take it. And so, uh, when to raise, you know, I'm not going to really get into that, um, that, that varies, uh. And, and I'm in no way um, uh, an expert on that. So when to raise, that's just uh, case by case. And uh, you know, I'd say uh, one rule is raise when things are going well, um, because you actually, you at least have more leverage. Um, you have the cards in your hands uh, versus if things are not going well, well, VCs are going to have more leverage, and your deal is not going to be as good. Um, that's that's I think pretty simple. Um, yeah, the pitch. Uh, back to storytelling. Um, I, from what I've seen, and and the most successful uh, um, at teams, um, and 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 from everyone I've talked to, they they just make it very simple. Um, they have two pitches, uh, less than one minute. That's go-to for everybody. Uh, you know, what does your product or service do? Uh, does it pass the grandma test? Uh, and again, a lot of our pitches, a lot of, of, of founders, a lot of companies, they have a lot of jargon and a lot of what I, what I call smart words um, that just should not be there. Uh, make it very simple. You know, I know. We're in a, two, a, 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 a super technical field, uh, you know, Bitcoin, um, but it doesn't mean we should not be able to pass a grandma test uh, with your pitch um, and your ability and how well you do that is, is going to really help you out. Um, and so what market are you addressing in the size? What have you done? Uh, you know, users and growth. Um, and that's the less than one minute pitch, the two to three minute pitch. Um, you know, you don't need a super long pitch. Um, you know, I, I've, uh, uh, yeah, just for VCs, potential co-founders and employees, two to three minute pitch is, is all you need. Um, you know, talk less, um, just two to three minutes. If you can get all these things answered in that time um, in a way that your grandma understands, you're going to do much better than a longer pitch with a lot more <coughs> smart words and, 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 and technical data. Um, everything in the two minute, everything for your less than one minute pitch plus uh, team and founders about them, what have you done? Uh, how do you work together? How well do you work together? Uh, that's what they're going to be looking for. You know, how is a team uniquely positioned? Uh, data and numbers. 
how you generate revenue, if, if any, uh, or how you plan to, uh, what's your purpose for raising, and then conclusion, you know, uh, 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 and, and the ask. Um, just what do you want, like why are you there, and, and what are you asking for? And so, uh, yeah, other considerations, uh, what's the right amount of equity to sell? Uh, too much is bad, you know, I hear uh, pretty often, you know, oh, you know, this, this team raised this much, so much, uh, that's a lot, like, like it was a success when, I mean, really, you, you can raise too much, and that's actually worse than raising, you know, in, in many cases, than raising too little. Um, you know, go back to value and valuations and risk, right? Uh, you know, how do you value value, and how do you value all of your actions and all the value that your product and service creates? How do you value your company? Um, you know, getting good at that, um, that should... That, that should tell a story uh, uh, that makes sense. And, and the amount of money that you ask for should be in line with that story and should all make sense. And so obviously you don't want to give too much of your ownership up too early, um, you know, because that can be pretty demotivating, right? If you create subsequent, subsequent rounds, um, you know, A, B, C, D rounds, you know, at the end of it, well, you're left with very little. Um, and so, uh, and so, yeah, so be precise with what you're going to accomplish in each round. Um, raise according to the value of each milestone with how you value, uh, uh, you know, the value that you create uh, for the company and, and the amount of money should tell a story and match with those milestones. Um, also document everything. And this is, this is for everything, not just, you know, raising capital, which is, is probably one of the least uh, important things we're thinking about, talking about right now. So. Uh, so I'm wondering right now why I'm talking about it. Um, but uh, yeah, from start, just document everything uh, about everything you do, uh, you know, you and, and your team, you know, every, everything, uh, whether it's good or bad, document it, save it, um, and, and, and take notes. Um, and, uh, and yeah. And then the last point is uh, mental models um, and really I look at this as just really, a, uh, or what they are, is just a framework for how you and your org make decisions. Uh, you know, so this is really important, um, and I've seen, uh, uh, and and to myself, uh, it's it's really helped me, and and um, it's it's really important because, um, you know, you and your co-founders, right? You all, you make decisions personally. Um, you know, as founders, you want to be as consistent as possible. Uh, when you're operating consistently and something goes wrong or something doesn't work uh, because your framework for how you make the decisions is consistent over time and, and you use the same framework and it's you know not chaotic or it's a lot less chaotic, uh, you have a much easier time of identifying you know what went wrong, why it went wrong, and then you can test and iterate until you get the expected and optimum result. Um, so if you don't have that model and, and, and that mental model of, of how you make decisions and how you arrive, arrive at the best decision, you, you're, you're really just kind of throwing darts, um, you know, blind, blindfolded. Um, and so uh, that's super important. Uh, uh, personally, um, you know, I know first principle thinking, that's a pretty common one. I know Elon Musk mentions that a lot. A lot of people, uh, uh, this is super common, but question assumptions and build solutions from the ground up. Uh, you know, breaking down problems, their fundamental truths and first principles. I mean, that's essentially what Satoshi did, right? So we have an example of, of, of Bitcoin, how it was created, breaking down something to its essentials, um, and the market values that a lot. Um, so that's, that's essentially what he did. Um, risk assessment and mitigation, risks are good when they're informed and calculated. Um, Right, I think there's a big misconception uh, uh, um, that risks are bad. I mean, risk can be really good uh, when they're calculated risk. You can develop strategies to mitigate them. And, uh, and I, I uh, uh, play uh, 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 poker. Um, I would say I'm a pretty uh, uh, skilled, um, um, or played for many years, I'll say that. Um, and there's a saying that says, don't be results oriented. Um, and, and that 
actually plays a big piece into how you manage risk and, and mitigate risk in your startups, right? For example, what that means is, say there's a 70% probability of, while I'm in a hand, of me winning uh, this poker hand. Okay, well, that still means 30% of the time I'm gonna lose. So if I make that bet where 70% of the time I win, and it happens to be the 30% of the time that, it, that I lose, and I get unlucky, and it is 30% of that time, I, I shouldn't be down because I still made the right decision because 70% of the time, over time, uh, I'm going to be a winner. And so what, what, you know, what you see a lot of people doing that are less skilled um, in poker is well, they take that feedback as, oh, they made, the wrong, the, the, they made the wrong decision. So the next time they're in a similar s s scenario, they do the opposite, which they're only getting a 30% win rate. Right, and the same can be true in business. So there are cases where, you, especially in risk assessment, where you don't want to necessarily be results oriented. Uh, you want to understand your risk, and and that is going to help you make informed and calculated decisions. Um, and so also feedback loops, create rapid feedback loops and iterate and improve, and that'll help you learn quickly uh, from failures and mistakes. Um, And sorry, I'm gonna try and hurry up. I know I'm a little bit over, so. Uh, organizational mental models, so yeah, mission statement, vision, operating principles. Uh, it's typically um, in the form of uh, one or all of those. Uh, I you know, highly recommend everyone should have these memorized. Everyone should operate by these and believe in these 100%. Um, you know, it's a way for you to align yourself with other founders and employees so that you're setting yourself up for, for consistency across the org, similar to, you know, you wanna, personally make consistent decisions, or at least based on uh, uh, you know, a, a, a consistent framework uh, for how you arrive at the best decision um, or the best decision that you perceive at the time. Um, you know, you're not be able, as a founder, you're not probably not gonna be able to be in every single conversation. I mean, you probably will in the beginning, but over time, you know, you can't be everywhere at once. Um, so you're not gonna be in every conversation um, or may not always be there um, in every meeting or on every call, but, uh, you still need a mechanism that promotes consistency across you and your co-founders and and ultimately uh, as you hire employees uh, you know you also want them to adopt that same framework so you're all operating consistently um, so you at least arrive at similar uh, decisions or, or a similar ballpark because um, if you're not again you're you're, you're throwing darts uh, blindfolded and things are a lot harder to to improve or correct or even know where to begin um, um, in those uh, in, in those situations. So, um, so yeah, uh, that is the end of my presentation. Uh, future is bright, and uh, truth will win. I got a question for you. Sure. Uh, is this on? Yeah. Um, so, um, you live in the central Texas area and you, you hang out with a lot of Bitcoin startups and we have a good good community here of all that kind of stuff. And you've given me advice, you've given a lot of other startup founders advice. What's, you know, without saying any names or, you know, all that kind of stuff, what's the reoccurring theme that you see a lot of us have problems with? And then what's the reoccurring theme you see us all really excelling at just here in Austin and central Texas? Mm -hmm. I see reoccurring is um, excelling and that's a great question. Let's say a problem is maybe not getting out of your bubble. That's, you know, and it's really, it's really hard to right? Cause being in the Bitcoin bubble feels great. You know, go listen to Michael Saylor for a few minutes. Uh, it feels great. Um, or, you know, pick your, your, your favorite podcast or, or a person, um, you know, gets you pumped up, you know, gets that dopamine flowing. So, you know, I guess your natural reaction is, well, why would you want to leave that? But uh, I would say getting out of your bubble and talking to people that aren't Bitcoiners, right? I mean, m you know, maybe your product or service, okay, maybe it's only Bitcoiners. Well, that's probably not many, right? Like that's, you know, you're probably going to be selling to at least, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe a lot of these, maybe a lot of startups are Bitcoiners only, but odds are you're probably selling at some point to people that are not 
hardcore Bitcoiners like we are, right? Like not everyone in the world is going to be a, a, a you know hard, as hardcore as we are, right? That's pretty unreasonable. Um, as, as as much as we'd like it to be that way, um, that's just not very reasonable. So yeah, getting out of your bubble, talking to those people, talking to those users, and getting feedback. Um, I think even though maybe it's uninformed in some cases, but I think there's a lot of really valuable things that you can get from it. You know, be be grateful for all the feedback you get from them. Um, and I think there's some nuggets of, of things that you can get from those from those people. Um, just ask to comes down to ask the right questions too, or share. You know, you know comes to the presentation and the story that you're telling them. Um, but yeah, get out of your bubble, talk to those people, get that feedback. Um, and then the the best. Did I answer the best? That was the worst. That was, yeah, like the the best. Oh, okay. Well, the best is I think um, recurring. The best is yeah, just community. Um, very close knit, you know, kind of everything that represents Bitcoin, you know, so that may be expected, but you know, it's, it's like everything you hear on online or on the interwebs, uh, you know, is true, right? Community, uh, just really good people, um, you know, um, hanging out and just celebrating uh, someone's birthday or, or someone's, uh, you know, or Christmas uh, or Thanksgiving or, uh, you know, New Year's, you know, that's that's community. I think that's really, really important and really good. Which I guess, sorry, uh, uh, which I guess kind of those two answers, like, maybe conflicts a little bit, right? Like one's like, get out of your bubble, and then one, the other one's like, uh, yeah, you have a great community, right? Like you're saying, like, it's true, like a lot of us will only look in the Bitcoin space to get mm -hmm. ideas and to get all those stuff. Yeah. So I think it's important what you're saying, like, yeah. stuff outside of that, go to Capital Factory, yeah. learn yeah. from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's... Infiltrate. You know, going back to like, feel good friends, yeah, like, you want to be positive and encouraging, but I think there's a lack of like really hard feedback too. Yeah. And that's the most valuable, I think. Sorry, <coughs> sorry if I made you forget. No, it's all good. I know my question. Uh, so you talked a bit about storytelling and uh, I wanted to know if you had any tips or advice on how to put together a good story. Mm. Yeah, that's, that is a, a great, great question. Um, I would say, I mean, a, I think I, I address, I think some of them, which is like, you have to believe in what you're doing, right? Like, so say, for example, I'm going to assume you believe in what you're doing, you know, you've dedicated like to, uh, uh, to bid escrow, right? So you believe in, you believe in that hundred percent, you dedicated your life to it, right? You're working on it, I guess, full time, right? Um, so then how do you craft your story? Um, I would say, which I'm probably going to think of, uh, I, I'm going to think about it too after this and come back to you. But the thing that comes to mind first is, is like talking to your customers, like just who are your customers getting to know them as best as you can. And even whenever you think you know them, just keep talking to them. Um, or maybe if you don't have them any yet, like find out who you're, prospective customers are and talk to them, like what are their biggest pain points? Like why are they gonna use you? Uh, what incentive do they have to use you over someone else? Um, why do they value you? And then from there, I would, that's I think kind of the foundation of, of then your story that, that you craft of, you know, if you understand why somebody's gonna use you, why somebody loves you, why your, your user loves your product, who your customer is, then I think creating a story is a lot easier. But until you know that, if you don't know those things, I mean, how do you create a story, right, that resonates or really is impactful if, if it's, because that story is about, right, ultimately the user, right? So should be that, how, how, how you know, what does it make them, how does it make them feel, right? I, you know, I'm imagining like, okay, I'm trying to think right now, what's an amazing story that's, you know, when you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's a good story, uh, which I can't think of any right now, but 
just that feeling that you get whenever you hear something that that even though you may not know anything about it it still is it so resonates with you in some way um you know one, one thing that i liked uh i noticed uh, uh, uh yo Paki, um uh not carlos what was it gustavo or francisco francisco uh, uh he told his he gave a pitch at uh the meetup i think you're on the panel maybe you weren't uh at at, at a few weeks ago uh and he, he he spoke about culture being a really big part of of their product and bring in the culture like that's i think a great story that's an example right so um maybe it's not going to work for every single startup in that way but that's i think one great example of 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 starting to build a great story making about the culture bring in people's culture and and having it grassroots come up from there uh, uh focusing on the on the uh, uh the uh the mexican market um yeah i'd say to answer your question users talk to your users get to know your users be like the expert and your users and like what do they value and then from there um that I think is the biggest key to, to creating a great story. Thank you. Mm. Definitely. Here you go. Any other questions? All right, thank you.